वेलकम टू द वाटर ट्रीटमेंट क्लासेस इन लास्ट क्लास वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट डिस इन्फेक्शन वट इज डिस इन्फेक्शन दिस इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ किलिंग द बैक्टीरिया प्रेजेंट इन द वाटर ओके एंड द केमिकल्स यूज टू किल द बैक्टीरिया आर कॉल्ड एज डिस इन्फेक्टेंट्स ओके इन लास्ट क्लास वी लर्न अबाउट सेवन मेथड्स ऑफ डिस इन्फेक्शन ओके एंड देयर मेरिट्स एंड डी मेरिट्स ऑल्सो स्टडीड इन द प्रीवियस क्लास बट देयर वी डिट स्टडी द क्लोरीनेशन क्लोरीनेशन इज आलो वन मेथड ऑफ डिस इन्फेक्शन क्लोरीनेशन इज अ वेरी बेस्ट मेथड and the merits are this is a method is almost universally used to kill the bacteria present in the water everywhere wherever you go most probably for all public waters uh, to disinfect or to kill the bacteria we use chlorination this is one more method it is very good for public water supplies and community bathing public water supplies the huge quantity of water will be there uh, that water you need to Uh, that uh, bacteria present in those waters you need to kill them and you need to supply for that you are using you are adding chlorine to the water that is called as chlorination okay and it is cheap reliable and easy easy to handle and easily measurable the advantage of this chlorination is it is available with a less cost compared to those seven methods and it is reliable everywhere it is available and uh, easy to handle anyone can handle it doesn't mean that we want uh, it doesn't mean that we want uh, skilled laborers and all okay easily measurable the quantity is also you can measure it easily and you can apply it okay then above all it takes care of recontamination of water by providing residual disinfecting effect for long periods means recontamination you add a chlorination you add a chlorine to the water and it will kill the bacteria that is good and after in future if any recontamination occurs then who is responsibility to kill the bacteria but this chlorine will take that responsibility also it will kill kill now when you add and even it will stay inside uh, as a residual chlorine and in future also if any bacteria comes that also it will kill therefore the main advantage of chlorination is it will take care of future contamination and it will be there in the water as a residual okay for the longer periods this is one very good advantage of this one then demerit is it gives a bitter and bad taste but not that bitter and bad taste for those who are very sensitive with their tongues the for them only they will experience that by adding chlorination they will feel some bitter taste or bad taste they will feel it but that is not that much big demerit we can overcome that and we can use it now action of chlorination how it uh, for how it uh, uh, that process of chlorination takes place inside the water okay see we have a h2o we have a water and we will add chlorine to the water chlorine is cl2 and we will add cl to the water and the reaction will be hocl plus and hcl will be produced these two will react these two will react and we will get hocl and hcl we will get it and this hocl we will call it as hypochlorous acid okay this is called as hypochlorous acid and this reaction happens only when ph value is greater than 5 if ph value is less than 5 then this reaction will not happen and this hocl it will again dissociate again depending on the temperature and the ph value this hocl again dissociates and it becomes h plus ion and ocl minus ion this h plus ion you already know hydrogen ions and ocl minus ion means hypochlorite ion this is hypochlorous acid and this is hypochlorous ion this is a reversible process means based on the ph value i, I will explain in the next slide based on the ph value if the ph is something that to uh, this range to that range then this hocl will no longer be as hocl it will split into h plus and ocl minus if the ph value is something different and which is favorable for hocl then these two will associate and they become hocl like that these two this reaction is irreversible based on temperature and ph value okay 
you can see this pH ranges we know the pH value will be varying from 1 to 14 and this is the pH 1 and this is the 14 and here this reaction will always take place pH value greater than 5 means greater than 5 here only you will see the uh, chlorination action but below this one you will not see any chlorination action okay then what happens if I add a chlorination if the water value is uh, water pH value is less than 5 and if I add a chlorine what happens then chlorine will um, stay in the water as a chlorine only it won't react with any compounds present in the water okay now if the pH value is more than 10 more than 10 till 14 then we will see all HOCl will dissociate and it becomes H plus ion and OCl minus ion. If the water pH is more than 10, then we will see only OCl minus ion present in the water. Means we add a chlorine to the water and it becomes HOCl plus HCl and uh, this HOCl will uh, dissociate everything. All HOCl will dissociate and it becomes OCl minus ion. You will see 100% uh, OCl minus ions if the pH is more than 10. And if the pH is less than 7, you will see only this HOCl means if the pH value is less, uh, less than 7, then you don't see any dissociation of this HOCl, uh, that hypochlorous acid. You will see 100% HOCl only. And in between, if you maintain the pH, then both this HOCl and OCl both will present here. Okay. Now, this Cl2 and HOCl and OCl, this these three, this is a free chlorine and hypochlorous acid and hypochlorite ion. These three we will call it as a freely available chlorine. These freely available chlorines are, they have a, a very distressed, um, disastrous uh, uh, that what disinfecting pro property means they are, they kill bacteria very fast. Okay. These are very good. Okay. And among these Three HOCl has a very powerful compound we can say, and it it is very powerfully kills all the bacteria instantaneously. Therefore, this HOCl is very important. Now coming to the pH scale here, pH if it is less than seven, then we will absorb hundred percent HOCl in the water. Means when you add a chlorine to the water, then it is necessary to maintain the slightly less than seven pH of the water slightly less than seven. Then you will absorb all HOCl's then killing of the bacteria becomes very easy okay therefore this we need to remember always when you go for chlorination then the ph value of the water should be slightly less than 7 okay now it doesn't mean that cl2 and ocl are not powerful but they are also powerful but hocl is 80 times powerful than these two okay this hocl is 80 times powerful than this Cl2 and OCl. Therefore, this crown is given to HOCl. Now, this these three are called as freely available chlorine. But this HOCl will react with ammonia. Means in previous slide we came to know that the pH value we will definitely will maintain less slightly less than seven. Then we will see all H, uh, that chemical compounds will be in terms of HOCl only. But in water, if uh, ammonia is there then it will react with ammonia and it will form monochloramine and water it will form monochloramine mono means one chlorine is there and ammonia is there therefore it is called as a moro monochloramine then this monochloramine again reacts with the uh, that available uh, hocl and it will produce dichloramine okay and again this dichloramine again react with the hocl then it will give nitrogen trichloramine okay why these three reactions because as i said that if the ph value is less than seven then all compounds all chlorines will convert into hocl means we will have abundant hocl in the water then this ammonia react with this and this will react with this and this will react with this and we will get a monochloramine dichloramine and trichloramine these mono di and trichloramines also have a disinfecting property means these three are very powerful and they will kill the bacteria the same way these three also these three also kill the bacteria effectively okay and these three are called as combined chlorines okay but when they exist in the ph scale if you see if the ph is more than 7.5 we will see all the 
uh, that HOCl react with uh, ammonia and it will produce monochloramine uh, chloramine compounds only. And if the pH value is uh, less than 6.5 and more than 5, then all it will react and it will give end product as a dichloramine only. And if the pH value is less than 5 or less than 4.4, then we will see trichloramines. Okay. And among these two, then again these two are really very good. And among these two, um, bad. Okay. Now, we already came to know that chloramines so found are stable and possess uh, disinfecting properties. This is one, this one and these three are mono, di and trichloramines. They also have a, that what, uh, uh, killing property, killing the bacteria, the, that property they have. They are called as combined chlorines. The, they help in removal of odor also for a small extent. They will even help us to remove the odor of the water. Now comparing to the free chlorine, uh, available chlorine and uh, combined chlorine which will be more stronger. Then obviously this family is more stronger and this will be 25 times more uh, powerful than these three. Means always in a water we should have free chlorine, free, uh, free available chlorine um, inside the water so that our process will become uh, that killing the bacteria becomes very easy. Of course, if any ammonia is present in the water, then it will create it as a monodi and trichloramines and that is also very good in killing the bacteria. Okay, no? That we will see uh, that later in doses you are heading. Then here we will see one hypothesis that is an enzy enzymatic hypothesis. Then how they kill the bacteria? Okay, this chlorine when we add, how they kill the bacteria? They kill the bacteria means uh, in war uh, you will see uh, one person will be holding some gun and they will shoot someone and or otherwise they will uh, uh, that strike through the knives and somewhere and they will kill the bacteria and they will kill human beings. These are all things we see in, uh, in wars. But in bacteria how they kill is here the chlorine whatever we add that enters into the cells of the bacteria. That cell cover will be there. This chlorine will help uh, help to that uh, dis uh, destroy the cover of the that cell of the bacteria and this chlorine enters inside the cell and that chlorine which is entered inside the cell first uh, that will kill the enzymes which are essential for metabolic process of living organisms means when they enter this chlorine enter into the uh, cell of the bacteria then it will kill the enzymes present in the bacteria those are very responsible for metabolic pro uh, process means uh, we can say that food producing or reproduction process okay they will kill that one thereby the family of the bacteria will be destroyed now think that how that chlorine when the chlorine enters inside it directly will not kill the bacteria it will first react with so many uh, compounds present in the uh, water and after that uh, at a particular uh, time of interval or at a particular dosage it will have a, a property of killing the bacteria okay therefore that we need to understand how much chlorine we need to add that is your dosage of chlorine see the impurities present in the water we will divide into two parts one is inorganic impurities and second one is organic impurities okay inorganic impurities means what your sand or iron some metals that you will call it as a inorganic impurities and organic impurities means some acids fats sorry not acids amino acids and fats and uh, these uh, oils they all comes under organic uh, impurities and when chlorine we add first uh, it will react with inorganic compound means it will uh, react with the inorganic compound like uh, sulfur iron manganese or NO2 first it will react with this one and uh, it will convert itself into chloride we added a chlorine but first it will react with inorganic component compounds and it will convert it into chloride now this chloride is not a it don't have any residual ox oxidizing power or otherwise it don't have any uh, bacteria killing power therefore we don't want this chloride okay we added a uh, chlorine to the water and that chlorine instead of killing the bacteria it is reacting with this one and after uh, satisfying these criteria then again we are adding a chlorine again we are adding a chlorine that again added a chlorine will react with the ammonia understood matlab pehle hum kuch kuch chlorine logon ko bhej diya andar 
कुछ लोग जैसे जैसे अंदर आ गए तो वो पहले ही इनके साथ युद्ध करेंगे वो इनके साथ युद्ध करके करके वो सब क्लोराइड बन जाएंगे दीज क्लोराइड्स हमारा बैक्टीरिया किल करने के लिए अच्छा नहीं बनेगा तो इसलिए हम और क्लोरिन को अंदर भेज देंगे और क्लोरिन अंदर आ रहा है तो वो जब दूसरा सेट ऑफ क्लोरिन जब आएगा वो सभी एन के साथ युद्ध करेंगे देन आफ्टर दैट दे विल गेट अ कम्बाइंड क्लोरिन्स दे आर कार्ड एज क्लोरामाइंस इन लास्ट रिएक्शन वी सी देन अगेन दीज आर लेस डिस इनफेक्टिंग प्रॉपर्टी तो इसलिए हम क्या करेंगे और एक और थर्ड ग्रुप ऑफ क्लोरिन को और भेज देंगे अंदर जब हम और भेज दिया तो वो सभी आके क्या करेंगे ऑर्गेनिक इम्प्योरिटी के साथ युद्ध करेंगे देन उसके बाद में वो अगेन कम्बाइंड क्लोरिन बनाएंगे लेकिन ये कम्बाइंड क्लोरिन बैक्टीरिया किल करने के लिए मदद नहीं करेगा तो इसलिए क्या करेंगे और क्लोरिन को ऐड करो देन अगेन वेन वी एड अ क्लोरिन देन ऑल दिस ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड्स एंड दिस एन एच थ्री एंड दिस ऑर्गेनिक इनऑर्गेनिक ऑल आर डेड देन वट एवर वेन वी वट एवर द क्लोरिन वेन वी एड दैट बिकम्स एज अ फ्री क्लोरिन एंड दिस फ्री क्लोरिन विल स्टार्ट किलिंग द बैक्टीरिया मीन्स नाउ थिंक हाउ मच क्लोरिन वी नीड टू एड वी नीड टू एड अ क्लोरिन टू सेटिस्फाई इनऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड टू सेटिस्फाई अमोनिया कंपाउंड to satisfy organic compound and after that we should have a little bit of free chlorine inside the water so that this free chlorine will kill the bacteria therefore and it doesn't mean that in the last slide we saw that here in this process meanwhile we got a combined chlorine also this combined chloramine what we get this also having some disinfecting agent Uh, disinfecting property and still we want a free uh, free chlorine also why because this free chlorine will take care of future contamination and this combined chlorine that in the form of chloramine it will take care of present uh, contamination and it will kill and this will residual it will be left as a residual in the water and it will take care of the future contamination means the combined chloramine and free chloramine together we will call it as a demand but how to observe this demand that we will observe it when we go on adding the chlorine into the water after 10 minutes of adding if we see 0.2 mg per liter of free chlorine residual means at the end residual if it is available then we will stop adding the chlorine okay we will stop adding the chlorine then our formula becomes chlorine demand how much it was a, there was a demand that can be calculated as how much we have added and how much it is residual in the water okay this is what very important uh, equation that is a chlorine demand equal to chlorine dosage minus chlorine residual chlorine residual means after adding a 10 minutes of time uh, there should be 0.2 mg per liter of chlorine and dosage is what how much you are adding and demand is what how much chlorine is required to kill not only bacteria how much chlorine is required is to react with the inorganic organic compounds present in the water okay this is all about process of chlorination in the next class we will explain the types of chlorination there are some important terms are there that we will explain and this is very interesting concept we'll go ahead okay thank you